Hi folks, this is Doug Reed and I'm going to show you my technique for resawing on the bandsaw. The first thing we want to do is take a piece of wood that has one straight edge on it, scribe a line down parallel to one edge, and we're going to use that for freehanding our cut. Now all I'm doing here is just following the line. I'm not really trying to keep the board straight. Uh, in fact, it's important that, that I don't try to force the board. And you'll probably be able to see here that the, the uh, piece of wood is not parallel to the table. You can see by the lines in the table there. But that's fine because what we're doing here is figuring out which way that blade drift wants to run. Every blade has drift to it and we have to figure out where that is. By doing this cut, we're able to uh, figure out where the blade drift is. Now we simply take a clamp, clamp on one end and then clamp the other end down. And then what we're going to do is set our fence parallel to that. And, and by doing that, we're not changing the drift of the blade because that's not something we can cha change. But what we're doing is setting our bandsaw fence to match the blade drift. Not where the blade physically is, but where it wants to cut. And that's just going to let us uh, have much better results when we do our, our resawing work. I use the two set screws here on the back side of the fence. And by running those in or out, I can set the blade drift. So I bring it right up to the edge of the board and just do a quick check here. And I happen to have my clamp in the way, so let me move that out just a touch. There we are. And now we're set. So again, let's bring our fence in. As I'm, I'm checking down the edge of the fence next to the piece of wood and making sure that the, it is parallel all the way along there. Once I have done that, I am set up and I'm good to go. Now, if I do need to make an adjustment, I'll just take my standard Allen wrench, 532nd, and run the screws back on one side or the other side until I get it perfectly parallel. And that's really all there is to it. Now, if those set screws are very loose, you might want to put a little Loctite on them, or you can just take a pair of pliers and ding the threads a little bit just so they don't vibrate loose. Normally, they won't move, but I like to make sure that they're not going to move because once I set the fence to that, uh, to that particular blade, I'm not going to have to reset it, so I'm going to make sure that it's staying, staying where it should be. Uh, this is a real simple step. Once you've done it once or twice, you'll be able to set your fence in, oh, just a minute or two, uh, but it really makes a big difference in the results, so it's, it's just one of those things you really want to know how to do. All right, I've set up for resawing. You notice I've added a feather board in here. I really like these feather boards. Um, in fact, if you have a, a couple of them, you might want to run one before and one after the blade. It just gives us a little bit more control and better accuracy. I'm using a 5 8 inch uh, wide resawing blade. I'm cutting very close to the fence on this cut. Um, I do this for demonstration purposes, but it's also something that you might use. If you're wanting to make a veneer for any purpose at all, and uh, both in cabinet work and furniture work, that's something you, you may need to know how to do. Uh, in fact, a lot of craft work and puzzles, things like that. So if you set this up properly, um, and you're using especially the Power Pro headstock, you should have no problem doing this. Our blade is, uh, is uh, at the right tension. We've got the right speed on the, uh, the headstock, which is basically bandsaw speed. It's about 900 RPM. And we'll run our dust collector here just to collect a lot of that sawdust and just go for it. I just use a moderate feed rate here. I'm not in a big hurry. I reach around the back side just to uh, hold the piece into the fence since I don't have a feather board back there. And I'm just going to grab a stick of wood here to push this through. Uh, at the end of this cut, when you get very close to the end, obviously you don't want your fingers that close to the blade where the blade might break through the piece of wood. So just use a piece of uh, scrap wood is fine if you happen to have push stick uh, in your pocket, that would be even better. And there we have that beautiful veneer type cut. We can use this for shaker baskets. We could use it for puzzles and toys, craft work. Um, if you're building bent wood furniture, a way to increase the strength is to use uh, laminates glued up instead of actually trying to bend the wood. And it works great. So there's an awful lot of reasons that you might want to be able to use that. Finally, I'm going to show you resawing a piece of five inch thick oak. Now that's hard, dense wood. You notice the burn marks on there, that's from my chop saw. 
So uh, it is a is a tough piece. Um, most bandsaws simply couldn't handle this. In fact, I have uh, been in uh, demonstrations up against some three thousand dollar bandsaws, and they hated to see me do this because uh, their bandsaw wasn't able to. So it's a great technique. Make sure that you set for the blade drift, like I just show you. Use the right speed on your Power Pro headstock. Use a feather board. Have your push stick ready. All these things will just make the, the uh, process go a whole lot, whole lot easier for you. Take your time with this. But on other bandsaws, what I found if I tried to do this, either the bandsaw would stall out, or the blade would break, or the blade would bend severely. So I wouldn't get a parallel cut. I'd get a big uh, bow in my piece. Um, but with your shopsmith setup, folks, you should be able to do this without any problem whatsoever. And I think the results are just amazing. So there is your resawing. And if you have a look at that, you'll see that it's consistent. Those holes, by the way, are holes that I uh, drilled in a piece for another demo that I was doing. Um, I was drilling uh, two and a quarter inch holes just to show how well the Power Pro headstock handles that operation as well. That's all there is to it. Now I've flipped the uh, piece of oak around. I'm going to make that cut one more time on the other side just so you can see how that works. And again, if you've uh, done your setup properly the way I've shown you here, you've got the right blade in place and you've got the, uh, the Shopsmith Mark V working for you, uh, you should have no problem doing resaw cuts. You know, I was thinking about this. Another place where this will come in really handy, and not so much that you need the power, but if you're making inlay stringings, anything that's small, Let's say you need some pieces that are a quarter inch by a quarter inch or an eighth inch by an eighth inch. Those are pretty tough to do on a table saw, but it's a great way to do it using your shopsmith in the resaw mode. Also, if you're uh, ripping anything at all that's too difficult, cumbersome to do on the table saw, think about your bandsaw. You may want to build yourself a little in-feed, out-feed table or some kind of support for those bigger pieces, but this will handle the, uh, the rip cuts, the resaw cuts, as well as your fine curve cuts. And once again, it's just that easy to do when you have the right tools and a little bit of the technique. This is Doug Reed. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you need to get a hold of me, you have my email address. Just get, drop me a quick email and I'll help you any way that I can. Thanks for watching.